Welcome back to Dry Hollow Homestead. We are making cheese again today. Uh, it's already been a busy morning. I've already made a gallon of cream into butter. And I'm going to go ahead and make Asiago with six gallons of cream. Or cream? Huh. Wish. Six gallons of milk. I actually scraped the very top of all of those gallons off to make this butter. Um, so this is going to be more of a drier cheese. That's what happens when you take the cream off, which is fine. Asiago needs to be a drier cheese. So I'm going to heat this up to 85, 90 degrees, which it is there now. My culture for this is going to be yogurt whey from when we made yogurt into um, a Greek yogurt where we strained off the whey. We saved that whey back. This is it. I'm using that as my starter, starter culture. For six gallons, I'm going to use one cup of this. Um, and I, I can kind of tell on the side, it's got measuring things on this mason jar so I can get it down. It's at three, I'll just measure it down to there. I might get you a little closer so you can see that process. I'm starting this a little later than usual, but I had to get up and do um, all the farm chores and go get grain and all kinds of stuff. So I went from three down to two cups Put that culture in. We're going to stir it up and down. This is what you do. You don't want to splash uh, when you stir it like that. You don't really want to do that whole bunch. Don't tell me why. That's just what every cheese making book tells you. So I have the heat turned off because I'm at the temperature. I'm at probably 90 degrees on the dot. So I am going to stir this culture in and then I'm going to allow this to ripen for 40 minutes and then I will come back and put the um, the rennet. Then we will put the rennet in together. On any time I'm letting this do anything on its own, I am putting the lid on my pot. I'm not having anything to chance. And I always set a timer. I usually use my watch because I always have it on me and um, I can Set a timer for whatever I have going on in the kitchen. The timer has gone off. This has cultured for 40 or 45 minutes. I'm going to put my rennet that has been diluted in a quarter cup of water. This is one teaspoon of rennet, animal rennet, for this whole six gallons of milk. This only works for raw milk. This is the only way I can give you directions is with what I have. That's what I have. This also needs to be non-chlorinated water. I keep forgetting to say that. I have a Berkey that I run all my water through. It's a black carbon filter and I love my Berkey. I really should tell you about it more sometime. But if you are on city water, you need to have non-chlorinated water for this. So I'm actually going to just pour that on the surface. Anytime you're using any culture, you do not want chlorine in it. It is not going to help your culture. It's going to kill your culture. And then we're going to stir the same way we did before. Up down motion. The majority of this cream is off. Probably in this whole gallon we only have about for this whole six gallons, we probably only have about two inches worth of cream line left. That's just going to make a great Asiago. That's why I enjoy this cheese, because it can be made with low uh, cream lines, which my cream lines are not low, but I really like butter. So this is something I make once I've pulled the majority of my cream off for butter. That's no reason to waste it. Okay, that seems to be stirred in well. We're going to let this set now to coagulate. It'll get thick into a large mass. We're going to let this sit uh, for about 45 minutes to 60 minutes. We're going to check it at 45 minutes and see if it is done. We will check for a clean break at that point. Okay, we're going to check for a clean break. It's been about an hour, actually. So use a clean finger. This has been washing a bunch of dishes and rinsed off really well, so it's very clean. And oh yeah, pretty clean break. 
See how it has a clean cut right there? It's not really jagged, it's clean break. So now we are going to, uh, we're gonna whisk these curds. Yay, whisking is so much easier. We're gonna whisk them. I have a whisker right here that works pretty good for this. It actually doesn't go all the way to the bottom. So we kind of start at the top, whisking. So much easier to cut these when they uh, evenly when you just whisk. Go down to the halfway mark and then I'm going to go to the bottom, whisking the bottom part. And then we are going to let it sit for five minutes. It's been a while since I've made Asiago. I usually make this at the very beginning of um, being in milk. I'm gonna forget to do it again. Okay, I'm gonna let this sit for five minutes. It's been whisked and broken up. Set that timer for five minutes. This is a really good thing. You can also add Asiago. You could add red pepper flakes too, uh, black pepper. Sometimes we do smoked paprika. That was pretty good. So I might actually do that this time. I'll show you at what point we will add that to this. Okay, five minutes is up. We are going to heat this on medium-low heat for 20 minutes and stir as we do that. Okay, so go medium-low. We're going to try to reach 105 over 20 minutes. This is going to be where you're going to be standing here actually stirring for that long. Probably going to begin with my paddle, my uh, spatula. And then I'll go to my hands, use my hands to stir up that a few minutes. So I'm only at 90 right now. So I might actually go a little bit higher than medium low in order to get up there because this is a huge pot to get to the temperature that I need within the 20 minutes. So you're gonna keep doing this, stirring, make sure you get that bottom. If you see any that it's broken up. Go ahead and do that while you're stirring for 20 minutes, and I will bring you back at the end of that 20 minutes. We have stirred this now for 20 minutes, getting the temperature up to 105 degrees. It says to turn the heat off and stir without the heat on for 20 more minutes. As you can see, these have definitely shrunk down. I will set that timer for 20 minutes and then bring you back at the end of that. I will not stand here the whole time. I will be washing up some dishes and stir again and go back and forth. The timer has not gone off. I have been stirring this now for 15 of the 20 minutes without the heat on. And I'm going to make the call right now that this is ready to be pressed. Um, there is not much whey left in it, and when I hold them together, they're not squishing out of my hands, they're actually knitting together really well. So this is something I can just tell from making cheese so many times. Sorry if you hear something, the children are upstairs. My kids are upstairs playing with Legos, and it's very loud. We do not have much insulation in between the floors. So I am going to skip the next part. The next part of the direction was to, we were stirring for 20 minutes um, off of the heat and then we were gonna turn that heat back on and get it up to 118 for 20 minutes stirring that time. And then we were going to drain off the whey and scoop out our curds and press them. We're skipping on to scooping out the curds and pressing them. I'm actually going to set a timer and leave these curds to settle at the bottom before I scoop off all this whey. So yeah, this is definitely ready. They are ready to be pressed. And I haven't decided whether I'm gonna make this into a black pepper or a smoked uh, paprika. I might do black pepper. We'll add that too. So I'm gonna let this set now for five minutes and let all of the curds settle to the bottom before we pour that off. Okay, I have scooped off most of the whey and put it in an empty five gallon bucket. I'm actually going to uh, stir in my 
black pepper and then I am also going to use my uh, my kettle of boiling water to sanitize my press and my cheesecloth. I'm taking my kettle with my boiling water. I'm actually just running it over. Um, I put this over my sink because obviously I don't want this running just anywhere and I don't really want to have to put another big pot under it. That's why this setup with my press is really handy. I, I really am glad that I went with this and it was much cheaper than some other presses that I had found. I would love to try different presses at some point. But this works for now. So here are our curds at the bottom. They look really good. They actually smell delicious. I'm going to actually strain out a little bit more of the way. Do I think I already saved a bunch of the other way. I'm actually going to feed that to the animals. Anybody that will drink it outside. Not anybody, but animal will drink it. I'm actually going to add uh, about three-fourths a teaspoon of black pepper to this. I think that should be about right. I don't know. We'll find out, right? Ooh, what in the world is on me? Okay. And then I'm just going to kind of break it up. Maybe I can show you if I do it down at this angle. Break it up and stir it in. This is nice. It's very therapeutic. When you have warm curds, it's kind of like working with dough. I find that very therapeutic too. So I'm gonna get it all stirred together. Then I'm going to put fill my press with these curds. I'm not gonna try to strain out any more of the uh, whey. That's gonna happen in the press. Uh, I have notes. Yeah, we're going to go with a firm pressure for 30 minutes and then we're going to flip it. Depending on what cheese you're doing is uh, how firm the pressure is, how much moisture you want left in there. Uh, this Asiago is going to be very dry, so it needs to be pressed very firmly. I think it's going to look pretty good with this black pepper in here. I've actually had this before. I have a smoked Gouda, a smoked paprika Asiago in the fridge that I have not opened yet. Uh, so I wasn't going to repeat that until I get to try it and make sure I like that flavor. But I think it should be good on Mexican food. At least that's what we call it here in the U.S but food originating from Mexico. More spicy food. Uh, maybe even like Indian. Mm, that would be pretty good too, with the paprika. Ooh, maybe I could do some kind of curry cheese. I'm not sure. I do a cumin, a cumin gouda. I enjoy that too, but I need to figure out how to do it without actually putting the seed in it. I'll figure that out and I'll let you know when I get it. But once you have the hang of making the cheeses, getting a different flavor to them is pretty good. I feel like we are pretty well incorporated with this black pepper. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in my bread. This can kinda of take a while. Uh, I guess it's not really a big mess. Bring it back when it is fully in my press. The sunlight coming in from the window is almost whitewashing this out. So sorry about that. But this just ended up being the time of day that it is happening, that I'm pressing. And I have to press at the sink to get um, the whey to go down into the sink as it presses out. So this is just what we'll deal with. So I wrap the top with part of the cheese ball. Loosen my spring up. Okay. 
Now it says firm pressure for half an hour and then we're gonna come back and press again. So I'm gonna try to line it up well. And we are going to push as hard as we can down on that spring. Get as much pressure down on that spring. And within 30 minutes, like I said, we're gonna set the timer. And if I walk by and I see that this, these are loosened up, they've already loosened up a little bit since I just did it, because a lot of weight is gonna come out at once. I will tighten that up. I will keep the tension. Sorry, this is just some extra cheesecloth that's there. This is actually not cheesecloth. This is a flour sack. Uh, kitchen towels that work really good. I actually just get that at Walmart. Do not get cheesecloth. It doesn't work for cheese. I don't know what it would work for. Certainly not cheese. Alright, so we definitely need to get this down a lot tighter. Okay. So parts of this press I bought from New England Cheese Making Company and part of it I got off eBay. Um, this was before 2020, so the prices of things have gone berserk, or maybe it was during 2020, whatever. But things have just went crazy since then, so I'm not sure how much it would cost now, but I got this whole setup with um, paying less than $100, and cheese presses can be pretty expensive, and especially when I was first starting out. I didn't know how often I would really be doing this. So I did not want to spend a lot of money. Obviously nobody wants to waste their money. So this was a really great setup and I'm very happy with it. So this um, drip pan was from New England Cheese Making Company and then also my mold and the follower was from there. And I grabbed these cheesecloths that are actually flour sack towels at Walmart. So I do this with a, the least amount of investment as I could. So I'm going to set the timer for 30 minutes, making sure these springs are really, really condensed. Every time I walk by, and then we will flip it and press with firm pressure overnight. Then we also have to put this in a salt brine. We made a salt brine in the video that we did Gouda, which is actually still sitting here on the counter. It's not quite air dried enough to vacuum seal. And we are going to set this, put this in that salt brine after it has been in the press all night. Timer is going off. It's been 30 minutes. We're going to go ahead and flip this and see what it looks like. And then we are going to put it back in the press and let it set overnight on firm pressure again. I know I keep seeing these steps over and over again, but I'm actually reminding myself because I've got lots of things going on. This is not the only thing I'm doing. So I have to tell myself what I've got to do next. All right, let's see. Take your follower out. Looking good. Take your cheese out by pulling on your cheesecloth. So those little black specks, as you can remember, is the black pepper, but it's not any kind of mold. It's looking, oh, it's looking, smelling so good. I really like that black pepper. Gives it a good tang. Okay, so this is the part that we have already pressed. It was like this in the press. This is knit together very well. We need to press this part. We're gonna flip it and let pressure come from the top down. I had it was a little bit crooked, so I'm going to try to remedy that in this next press. You want to try not to have any wrinkles in your cheese cheesecloth during this last press because it's your last one. The last one to try to get it right, right? Try to make it smooth. Um, sometimes, like the directions say to change the cheesecloth, I'm good. I don't really feel the need to change it. I'm not really sure what that would benefit because you would still have to wet it because you really don't want to stick your cheese in a dry cheesecloth. Um, so it's not because it's been with the cheese. And 30 minutes press 
relaxing time compared to overnight time doesn't really make any sense why you would why it would be okay to why it would not be okay to have it on there 30 30 minutes longer i'm twisting the wrong way okay. it is a little tedious to do this but i feel like i have a lot more control on a press like this and it takes up so much less counter space than some of the presses that I, I have seen. There are beautiful Dutch presses, but they are really big, very, very big. So I'm gonna get this down as firm as I can with as much tension in the spring as I can get without it um, starting to unscrew this. You wanna make sure you hold on to that. And then this is going to sit overnight. I'm going to leave it right next to the sink so that it drains down into the sink. That's why I really like that dip drip tray. At some point, I'll try to link it sometime if I think about it. The drip tray, it really does help. And maybe even the, the press and the follower. If you're interested, if I do not do that and you are interested, just give me a comment. Um, I try to pay a lot of attention to people um, when they're trying to asking me questions in the comments. And um, I'm pretty new at this, so I don't get a ton. So I'll be right on it, okay? So if I do forget, because I usually put these out days and days from when I actually filmed it, edited it, and upload it, because we live here in the, the boonies, and I have no internet in my home here on our homestead. I have to use my phone, wireless phone for that. It has internet on that, but um, there's no Wi-Fi. So what I was doing was leaving this overnight. Well, good morning. It has been sitting in the press overnight on firm pressure. It's Asiago. I'm gonna get it out of the press and we will see what we're dealing with. Let's see how well it pressed. And I'm sure I've said this because I like to talk a lot. <laughs> I'm sure I've already said we need to put it in a salt brine. Now, hopefully I explained. A salt brine um, that I'm going to be using is an 18% salt brine. That is five cups of water to one cup of salt. And I use pink Himalayan sea salt, so mine looks a little pink. Um, just a good quality salt. Don't use your table salt. Um, iodized table salt, do not use that. You want a good quality sea salt. <clears throat> and uh, you usually want that to dissolve well together, so you might want to do that with warm water. And then you want this to be room temperature when you put your salt, your cheese into the salt brine. So if you have not got one of these made, do it while this is pressing, like at night before it presses overnight. And that way it's room temperature by the morning, you can put it in. Um, if you make this, you can store it in your fridge for months. Um, and if you use it a lot, you just replenish some of the salt uh, back into it. So this was actually in the fridge. You should get it out of the fridge and let it come to room temperature before you put your cheese in it. Uh, do as I say, not as I do, because I forgot about that until a few minutes ago. So, it's going to be cold, but it'll still make good cheese. Okay. Whew. Very lopsided. <laughs> Very lopsided. Mwah. Mwah, mwah. It's okay. You see? very lopsided on this size a lot thicker than that but it smells delicious it's going to be now go in the salt brine but the directions always say for 20 hours <laughs> whatever and then flip halfway through so i just do before i go to bed i'll flip it tomorrow morning i'll take it off so it'll probably be more like 24 hours that's usually just what works best so i just kind of push it down because my salt kind of rests on the bottom it pops up and floats, that is totally fine. And this is going to sit in that salt brine at room temperature for 24 hours, 20 hours, whatever. Um, and you flip it halfway through. So this is morning, tomorrow, or this evening, I will flip it before I go to bed. Tomorrow morning, we will get it out 
and it will be ready to be air dried on the counter. Just like this Gouda is being air dried on the counter. And it still needs a little bit. You turn it every now and then. It still needs a little bit. It's a little wet still. You, they say a clammy handshake, a little drier than a clammy handshake. It's close. It's very close. All right, so we will come back when we take this out of the salt brine. Hi, I wanted to finish up that Asiago tutorial. I forgot to film me taking out of that, taking the cheese out of that salt brine. I did that and then sat it on a plate, just like that Gouda was setting on a plate. And we uh, air dried that for several days. It's actually still air drying. Um, and then I vacuum seal it. That's how I do that. Uh, I will link to my Gouda video up here so you can actually see that process. I won't take you through it. I'm a little too chatty and I'll end up picking another hour long video. So go ahead and watch that and we will see you back here next time. Subscribe. Thank you for watching and God bless.